Hello, Sebastian. Good morning. Hello, Jumika. How are you? Fine, thanks. And you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. A bit busy, as always. I imagine. <laughs> you are in uh, almost everything. <laughs> So, we have Kiva here today. That's awesome. Yeah. Morning. Hi, Kiva. And Christopher. Christopher. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Christopher. Hi, Tim. Hey, Sebastian. Uh, Hi. what about Joshua? Is he, is he back? Don't, no, he was sick yesterday, I think. Yeah, yeah. Haven't heard anything. Let's wait another 30 seconds or so. So we already have 10th of July. Okay. Um, Kiefer. First yes. time here in the August Twitter meeting. It's for 4 p.m. Yeah, so you're based in Asia. Yes. Perfect. And you're working on the on the dashboard. Yes. Um, do you already have some some screenshots or something to share from from your side? Uh, no, I, I don't have it right now. I I'm busy on some downstream work today. Okay. Um, so what what's your plan? How how do you want to start uh, with a with a listing of hosts or or what what's your what's your idea? So uh, right now my my first idea is to show all show all the orchestrator host um host page because we already have have a host page on dashboard. And I have a feeling we might have a stat for two kinds of of host. One is one is host already managed by the staff. Yeah. Uh, another one is not managed by staff yet and can be seen yeah. by orchestrator. Yeah. So I, I'm still still thinking about the term, maybe call managed or something. I don't know. I still think about it. And so we, we we have to merge the these both lists basically, or uh, to yes. make sure that we only show one list in the dashboard. Yes, and in some 
in some implementation, for example, in Rook, if, if the Kubernetes see a new host, it's already been added. We don't have to add the host. Yes. So it will right. be present as a managed one. And for now, I also try to show the inventory of the host. If I click the host, there will be a new panel that show all the disk um, for this host. Oh, that's great. Okay. So, oh, that's really great. Uh, that, that's my, my work so far. And I think also we may, may maybe create a new page about all the inventory. Yes. My, my, my idea right now is that there will be a table and with all the inventory and host. This will be much easier to search for for example, for if you want to search for a disk by serial number, you can do it in that page rather than jumping around between all the hosts. So that's my idea so far. I, I still not start to start to work on OSD features, for example, add or remove OSD, just to show the inventory. That, that would require some changes in the or the the orchestrators would then need to be aware that or I don't know how 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 much performance we can get out of the orchestrator. If you want to search for a given um, device serial number, for example, then we have to have all serial numbers. Basically, in the, in the manager itself, cached in order to to provide a result. Yes, for dashboard right now, the search is implemented in the front end, so everything is rolled from back end to the front end, and the search mm. in the JavaScript. Yeah, so you're pulling everything from the back end into the front end. Yes, but I don't know how, uh, how fast Rook can return all of the data. M might be that we need to enhance the Rook orchestrator for that. Yes, uh, need some more test. Perfect. Okay. Anything from anything else from your side? No. Okay. Um, do, do, do we want to make a stand up? Um, so the next, um, next on my list is Jean Miguel. You're basically working on Rock, right? Well, I, I have started, yes. <laughs> um, your RGW pull request for the Ansible Orchestrator. Um, I can run tautology on that on that pull request, I think. Yeah, um, sorry, you can't run that. I, I, I can. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. okay, perfect. Okay, if if no, I I, I think that uh, well, uh, probably uh, the best thing that we we can do is to to leave it uh, in in the in the current uh, status mm -hmm. and. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know if it, it, it I think that uh, maybe uh, it could survive in upstream uh, <laughs> uh, branches, but uh, I, I do not expect any any new uh, effort in this part. Okay. Then let's merge it and then see how far it goes. And we, we might even get a community community contributions to the Ansible Orchestrator if someone isn't interested. So yeah. I wouldn't uh, just re remove it Yeah. if someone is interested. Yes, maybe it could be useful. Yeah, indeed it is.
And at Cephalocon, there were really some interest in the, in the Ansible orchestrator. So it's there is a demand for that, yeah. Yeah. Um, next one is Christopher. Yes, I'm not really working on anything right now. <laughs> I guess uh, I'm uh, mostly working on understanding Rook and uh, Kubernetes. Uh, working, I have a, a cluster up and running with uh, with Rook and Ceph in it, which I'm playing with, um, but it's not quite working. I'm having some problems with Flannel. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what I'm working on. Okay. And. Tim, anything from your side? Um, not a huge amount right now. Um, I'd um, had uh, other unrelated downstream stuff to, that needed focusing on for a while. Um, um, but I need to get back to the um, the, the Icecasing and Ganesha URL um, PR that I have had sitting around for some time. Um, um, I did. Um, um, Whenever it was a couple of weeks ago, I did go through and test your um, um, cache uh, uh, inventory cache thingy, um, and that works fine. That that PR as um, at least I've tested the, uh, tested that against DeepC. Um, so from my perspective, that's good to go in. Um, and um, uh, what else? Oh yeah, um, uh, the drive groups. Um, uh, the Ceph Volume Drive Groups PR, um, thanks for your comment on that about the rationale for putting that in Ceph Volume. I think that's completely um, correct and sensible. The only other place you could possibly think of doing it is maybe maybe like a library, but then all the all the orchestrators would have to import that, so I don't really see the sense. I think Ceph Volume is kind of the right place. Um, uh, anyway, I haven't finished reviewing the code yet, so I'll, I'll make some comments on that um, a little bit later. And um, uh, yeah, I think that's it for me for the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've uh, put the I've put the links again in the in the other pad. <sighs> Drive groups, um, Kiefer. Yes. Have a look at that pull request. No, um, it it not yet. might make sense to add drive groups to the Ceph dashboard. Okay. It, it's not really a priority right now, but um, if we really manage to get drive groups into Rook and um, into the other orchestrators, then my feeling is that drive groups will be the main way to create. OSDs at some point in the future. Yes, because um, for OSD, not always the case. Uh, one OSD is always mapped to one disk. It might be yes. mapped back to some SSD or MVNE device. So there we is a... need, need another layer of abstraction. Yeah. There is a whole range of possibilities you can do with drive groups. Yeah. Complex setups, um, things like uh, having uh, under provision of SSDs to increase the lifespan of SSDs, um, splitting OSDs into um, a data, a white ahead log, and a, and a journal for and a database, for example. So there is. A huge amount of complexity that can be uh, uh, that where where drive groups can be used, and my feeling is that users will need it at some point. I will follow it. Okay, perfect. And I just upload the snapshot. Oh, sorry, screenshot. Oh, that's great. We have the inventory. 
in the self dashboard. Oh, that's great. Oh, cool. And that's from from a Cephcaster or from a um, uh, yes in Duke. From a rook cluster. Uh, oh, that's even yes. better. <sighs> I'm happy. Okay, that's all I have for today. Do you guys have something? Uh, nothing more for me. It it looks great, great. Just a few months too late, you know. Yeah. Having <laughs> that in in Nautilus would be awesome. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm I'm really happy. Okay then. Um, thanks for your time, and then next meeting is on Monday. Great. Or next one. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> hey, Sebastian. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I can. Hi. 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 Thanks. I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, I have shaman packages. Hey, 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 good morning. Morning. Hey, okay. What's up, guys? Just the usual week, maybe. Yeah, just went back from. The How is it? Is it too hot? Right now it's fine. Hi Nathan. Hi Nathan. L little time no see. Can you hear me now? Yes. We can hear you now. You're yes. unmuted. Yeah, hello, Yuri. Hello, Sebastian. Good to see you. Hi, Nathan. There's some noise around my sides are mute. So is Greg going to join us? I have no clue. We can try to pin him.
No worries, I was just curious. Hmm. So the only thing I do have, well, I, have I have two things. Uh, first, a sage told me that uh, um, there is effort going on to get containers into Bipia. Containers built for uh, things we build within Zipia. I've seen that being discussed. Um, I, it sounded like they were leaning towards building the container as a file and then as a tower. Yeah, tower and, then, uh, the, yeah, and copying it in and then adding it locally. But yeah, then, but, but then the other other people were in favor of using an, an outside service called I forgot the name of it. Yeah. So the problem with the tasks is um, that they are not so easily consumable, and Rook simply expects them to work like any other containers. So. Yes. You mean coming from Docker Hub or some other repository? Uh, from a repository <laughs> or. <laughs> The, the, thread, the, the discussion thread said that that created. I forgot the name of the, the repository, but creating one and and managing one ourselves was deemed to be too complicated yeah. and painful. I think it was Quay.io or something like that. Yes, Quay.io exactly. I've never looked at it. Me neither, but. I've got the information that there is uh, effort going on to make that happen in one way or another. Which would be awesome, I think. Um, and the other thing is that I haven't really made any progress with regards to testing the Rook Orchestrator. And as it seems now it it might actually make sense to wait until we have proper um, containers in sepia before even starting to test the rook orchestrator. That that starts to get sensible, I think. Yes, probably. Uh, but we can already start talking about how how the tests would be implemented. I.e., would you know? Would we use the existing smoke suite, or would we write a, a rook suite? Mm, you know, using the existing uh, suites is problematic because they all use, except for Ceph Ansible or Smoke, they all use the Ceph task to yeah. deploy Ceph. Yeah. yeah, and that's not a no go. We we can't use the Ceph task to test anything. 
um, in, in Rook. So it, it needs to be something completely new and um, I've made effort to actually do that. The only thing I need is a working self cluster. Every, or uh, I, I need images and um, maybe a Terraform environment or something like that. And then it's actually doable to do that, to, to test the Rook Orchestrator. Well, yeah, it's 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 uh, doable to write a test, you know, that yeah, I, 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 I already um, did. Yeah. So that um, the question is that I'm asking is how to organize the, the you know how to in, integrate it into the existing set of suites, but it, probably just the obvious thing would be to call to make a new suite called Rook. Yeah. Yeah. Something that is not related to the existing QA infrastructure. Not not very much related. Right. Well, and then and then there could be a rook. We'd have to write a rook task, which would actually. To deploy the use work to deploy the cluster. Yeah. Um, the, the, this this relates to the work Greg was doing on on uh, implementing some kind of an abstraction layer that would allow us to use different uh, different deployment tools, so that whereas where Seth could be one deployment tool, DeepSea could be another. Ansible could be another. I don't know if, if uh, Rook could also be another or if Rook has to be completely separate. That's Yeah. So I, I think Gypsy or Ceph Ansible would make sense. Um, but Rook that just does not fit into that uh, uh, into into the existing infrastructure because it uses completely different primitives to deploy services. Which are totally incompatible to anything else, and I'm I'm wondering how much sense it would make to add a new API layer for Ceph Ansible right now. Uh, add a new API layer for Ceph Ansible to what? Um, the so right now we are using the Ceph task, the Ceph deployment task. Okay, so you mean to tutology work? Yeah. Great. The, 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 the challenge is that, that we have a large set of tests, right? The, the RADOS suite contains 10,000 test cases or, or 50,000 test cases. And the, the RBD suite, the RGW suite, we have all of these suites that have been that have historically grown up over time, and they all depend on on uh, on their ex being a, a context which is set up by the Ceph task. So they all assume that the cluster is deployed by the Ceph task. Yeah, and then they, and then they use hooks. They use hooks to. To, um, to perform operations on the cluster, like uh, to create uh, uh, thrashing, for example, thrashing the OSDs, and thrashing the mons, and killing the mons, and bringing them back up, and, and, uh, and so instead of instead of you or the idea was to implement. Uh, and Greg would be the person to talk about this, not me. But as not my, my understanding was that that there would be an abstraction layer, which would which would sit between the Ceph task and and all and the existing tests that are implemented, and and that we could then slip in by making the other tasks like Deep C or Ceph Ansible compatible with that, then, then we could run the existing tests on clusters deployed by other tools. But yeah, as you say, if, if, if 
Rook, if it's if Rook is fundamentally incompatible with that idea, then we would never be able to run the existing tests on Rook deployed clusters, which seems a little unfortunate. It is. It is really unfortunate. Um, um, but I, I really don't see um, a good way to integrate Rook as Rook itself with the API that Rook provides into the structure that's used by Pytology. I, I've, I've looked into both interfaces and uh, they are totally incompatible. Unfortunately. Can you still hear me? Yes, I just don't have anything further to say. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, on that topic, I have another topic. But it's totally unrelated. Yeah, then go on. I, I don't have anything else. Okay, uh, I can briefly present it. Um, the the existing tests, um, a, a lot of them are implemented using work units. Work unit is is essentially a, uh, a Python task. Python module, which is loaded at runtime by Toothology, and it uh, creates it creates a sandbox environment on the on the test node that is indicated by the test configuration, and then it it, it um, clones the Ceph repo on that node, and then it, then it SSHs into that sandbox environment and runs a script which cut which is loaded or which enters the environment via that clone operation and it runs that script on the on the test node and if the script fails then it fails the test and if it succeeds then the test continues um, and the this um, work unit script using the git clone operation is problematic now that now that uh, the the QA, it's been this way for a couple of years now. That the QA uh, subtree of the repo is integrated into the main Ceph repo. It used to live in a separate Git repo. Yuri will remember that, and called Ceph QA Suite. And now uh, there's no separate repo. Everything is in QA. And so the work unit, instead of cloning Ceph QA Suite, it clones Ceph itself, which is uh, an expensive operation. And in, in the Cepia lab, this is um, not so expensive because the Git repo, the Ceph Git repo, is uh, mirrored in the Cepia lab infrastructure. So the, the work unit detects that. The work unit task detects that it's running in the SEPI infrastructure, and then it, and then it um, um, clones Ceph from the mirror, and that's a cheap, fairly cheap and reliable operation. Whereas outside of the SEPI lab, which is where I do most of my work, um, the we have right now since we don't have a mirror, we have to clone get uh, Ceph from GitHub which is an expensive operation, it's unreliable. So I wanted to, I wanted to talk about uh, um, alternatives to the work unit, work unit task. But I was hoping, was hoping to have Greg, Greg and or Zach here for that. Greg is here. Hey, Nathan. Sorry I'm late, guys. Hi, Greg. Um, what kind of alternative are you looking for? I mean, it's... I, I can't hear you. Oh dear. Um, you need to, I mean, working a test job is just to run shell scripts. Greg, I can barely hear you. 
Yuri, is there a problem? Do you have a problem with my audio? Is oh, wait. Yeah, let, let, me, let me increase the volume on my headphone. <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so the work unit task job is to run shell scripts, right? So you need to get the shell scripts from somewhere. And it, yes. it, it doesn't have to be GitHub, I guess, although that's obviously convenient because, like, the shell scripts change in time with the stuff code base. That's one of the problems, actually. That's the other part of the problem. Um, yeah. It, I, I wrote a long comment in one of, in my PR that, but the answer, the short answer to the question is, uh, for example, it, I'm implementing this test that runs the Ceph dashboard end-to-end -end tests, which are part of the Ceph dashboard code. It, uh, it packages those into an RPM together with a script, a batch script. And and then I, um, instead of using the work unit task, because it has this um, clone operation in it, which is which is problematic for me, um, I I simply install the RPM. I include the RPM in the in the um, um, additional packages for the install task. So it's installed, and then I I just run. I just run the, the script, basically, to make it simple. I just issue issue a command on the on the node on the on the node that executes the script, which is already there because the RPM is pre-installed, and then, and then uh, the, RP, the the script takes care of everything. So the answer is to to use packaging you know, to instead of uh, a clone operation. I don't think we're not going to do that with the work unit tasks. I don't think, though, like unless we want to package up a separate like Ceph QA thing that doesn't get distributed to users ever, right? Because it's all just like internal test. It's all internal testing scripts. It's not something that anyone's ever going to run on their own. They expect to like have a cluster that they can destroy. Um, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I understand, yeah. but we wouldn't want we wouldn't want um, a user to see that to be confused by it and run a script and destroy his cluster. Obviously. Yeah. Um, no, I was just thinking more in terms of of uh, are there cases where it would be desirable. Um, to it, given that the test is not destructive, you know, to uh, to package the test code as an RPM, or it, it, are we fundamentally against doing this? I mean, I'm not fundamentally against anything to do with packaging because I never have enough confidence to make those decisions. <laughs> I, I'm, I, yeah, I don't. I don't love the idea by nature, though, just because it's all like packaging. You expect to install somewhere and distribute, whereas I, I guess this this would be a question that I, that I would be more worried about the impact on the infrastructure and what like the people who do packaging care about. Because well, I'm so I'm a person who does packaging, you know, <laughs> and I I care about being able to test. Them. In, in the context of the upstream, like shaman yeah. stuff, that's actually yeah. been, um, I, I guess probably it would be a very small package and wouldn't really add any load, but I, I don't know that. And I mean, and we, and it would be a lot more one-time use packages that would like go up for every every PR and then disappear, or every or every QA branch and go away. Well, the package would only get installed in in the. Uh... In the test yeah. that uses it. Well, yeah. So it would have to be built for those tests, and then it would never be touched again, which we do with all the set packages. But I don't know. Well, yeah. It would it would the 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 package the RPM would be built in every build, right? Yeah. 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 And I mean, why why is it that packages are easier than cloning a Git repo for you to make fast? Oh well, the 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 clone from GitHub is is unreliable. It doesn't always succeed. Um, you know, and it, it pulls in like a hundred megabytes or however much, however much, you know, um, 
you know, um, it, it maybe maybe the the clone operation could uh, maybe there's a way to clone just the subtree of of the clone and and with actually depth, yeah depth the one adding the um what is it the shallow and and the and the directory yeah that would be much smaller that that would help and then and then the other the other the other issue is that um, in our infrastructure we packages that are that are built in the in the build service and so we don't have any shaman you know that's guaranteeing that the sha one that we built is the same as the sha one that we're cloning in the work, work working the task so that's a pain point but i guess i guess i can just you know yeah. You know, implement the implement the, the 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 test as a work unit for upstream and have a different different uh, method downstream. It's not a big deal. Was late, so I don't know where this conversation was before I joined. <laughs> Did we have other topics? Um, yeah, well, we before you joined, Greg, we were talking about the uh, testing look and testing and and testing using alternative deployment strategies other than the Ceph task. Yeah, I heard the very tail end of that. Any any thoughts or updates? No, I haven't been working on that for a while. Um, I would like for it to happen at some point, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to or not. Um, and I had several email threads on, on the mailing list about it, and they just concerned that just no one's ever going to succeed at it. So he's been pushing forward in alternate strategies like building work tests in um, in Kubernetes and just doing it separately. I guess we'll see see how it turns out. Yeah, the, and that's that's a, another another thing where, where you know we have this um, corpus of of tests you know, that um, assume that they're you know, running in a, in the Cepia environment with the Ceph task and and the the GitHub mirror and you know, so it's it's kind of part of that. that we, the, and then if it, but but I guess if if we you know if Rook is going to be deemed fundamentally incompatible, and, yeah, and we'll have to think outside of the box. Yeah, I don't think it's that anyone really wants to. It's just like, you know, people have over the years several times said, oh, we're going to, like, clean it up so you don't have to use the staff task, and then no one ever actually finishes it. So they just gotten tired of waiting and isn't sure that, that it can be done. <laughs> anyway, we, I didn't mean to rehash any old discussion. I just... We got quiet. <laughs> I wasn't sure if we had a queue of things. Not that I'm aware of. All right. Um, uh, uh, this isn't. This is a testing discussion, but we could also discuss the the Nautilus release that Yuri is preparing for testing. Sure. What What do you like to know about it? Well, I noticed that uh, um, as as usual. Some some people joined late in the game when we already the QE was well along, you know, and they they piped up, you know, and said, "Well, oh, this, you know, I need this PR and I need that PR." Are yeah, that 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 I didn't actually accept. It was somebody from I think 
Ivanovich from uh, RGW team and I actually wouldn't mind to do it but I let them to decide it and they didn't get back to me on that but during testing and this release is I think for future and I don't know it's probably critic to myself rather than to anybody else but I think I'm trying to like swallow too many PRs and my hunch is that we've got about maybe 200 plus PRs this time around and it's very difficult to like pull them all together at the end. So essentially what happened was that we discovered a couple of issues. One is related to Def Ansible, another is to, uh, I think something like on uh, G compiler is not compatible with RHEL 7.6 and it was breaking uh, Swift task and you know we found that and casey fixed it on some branches and then we ran into the same problem on nautilus so we needed to fix that as well and that actually broke probably like you know 40 percent of upgrades and that's what like taking right now time to kind of you know revalidate and to make sure that we're actually looking good it's almost done and then significant issue was discovered for uh their volume and quite frankly that's concerning because I, my, I, I actually don't know what happened, but it just wouldn't run. And right now they put several PRs on top of like initial one. And also another issue is staff deploy. And that's absol absolutely out of my hands. I don't know. I know that Tage is looking into that, but it sounds we're, to me like- We're working it, on it. You're working on cell deploy? No, I'm working on SSH orchestrator. And how is it related? It, it relates to, to self deploy because we we're going to use it for that? Um, so SSH orchestrator will be two parts. One is to bootstrap a cluster, and the other one is to extend the cluster using um, SSH um, to replace what we already, what we actually, what we right now have with dev deploy. So what does it mean for release then? Uh, am I waiting for you? That's not very likely not end up in Nautilus. So in other words, what you're saying is that you know we will approve without it, and then you will do it for next release. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, he means he means octopus. Octopus. Not the next Nautilus release. No, it it will likely not end up in Nautilus. Oh, but then, so it, it relates, but not significantly. One of the yeah, issues, by the way, with, with self-deploy, I'm not sure if you guys like aware of that, and maybe you know anybody. We don't have any like warm body responsible for self-deploy. And it's like, it's homeless and you know, we're trying to hold it and to, maintain and i guess like on one hand people don't don't want to drop it but on another hand it doesn't get enough love and that's that's what happens um i think alfredo wanted to at least make sure that it works i think if you say it to alfredo he would not like you <laughs> because he's he's been moving away from from self deploy for a while but i think if if you know anyone or if like if you anybody like interested in that i think it would be great to have a kind of like maintainer for self deploy he actually said ask um ask alfredo if he could at least make sure it run, it is running when when did it happen um recently la last wednesday Oh, so that's new. So that's the status. So my hope is that um, maybe end of this week we'll be able to like push it out. I don't think we, we will actually push it out. We can declare that like testing done. I, I have to open a PR with the release notes. That's something that's on my list for this week. Are you going to do it, you know, not Abby? Abby is on vacation. So, yes, oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm good doing it. 
you're getting my emails on status, uh, you yes. know, aren't you? Yes, okay, I get good, your emails. Because... I'm, I'm missing on IRC, I know, I'm sorry. Because I'm, 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 I'm using that new email address, so like just making sure that, you know, we still see each other. Well, um, yeah, <laughs> the, 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 somewhere in the, I guess it's maybe in the cron job that, where the, where you run the, the nightlies, it still has your old email address, and so I'm, I'm getting lots of emails to Seth QA saying that they can't. It wasn't, it wasn't in Quran. I mean, if you're referring to, uh, you know, why wine at sev.com, that actually, that actually was a variable in my environment, in my terminal, and I keep, you know, copying and pasting that. So hopefully I won't do it anymore. It's no, it's no, no problem. But I, I did notice that that email address is no longer. And you, and you guys take all, all this from me and keep quiet. You need to scream and say and yell at me. No, no, no. But if I understand correctly, back to Ceph deploy, Sebastian, you're saying that the SSH orchestrator will eventually make Ceph deploy obsolete or yes. yeah, replace yes. it. Yes. So that's or, a long-term plan. Instead of instead of maintaining Ceph deploy, replace it. Yeah. Or take over some of the code, or as you wish. So it, it, yeah. Well, then at least what? there would be a maintainer after that, but it would no longer be called Ceph deploy. Yeah. What would what would you call it? Mm, SSH orchestrator plus uh -huh. a bootstrapping tool. Aha. Uh -huh. So essentially, you're saying like you know, sudo less orchestrator or something like that. SSH. Okay. Then I guess what we'll do at that time, we will modify this suite and rename it and we'll use new functionality yeah. at yeah. some point. Yeah. Cool. I have to run. Yeah. Bye, right, Sebastian. Are we done, guys? Good night. Nice to see you. Good talking to you. Bye bye. Likewise. Later.